I love the diversity of the United Methodist Church. I love our theological diversity. I love our global diversity. And I often tell people, you never meet the same United Methodist twice. I love that because there's so much to learn from the body of Christ. The first memory of growing up in this denomination is Historically, our, our conference had youth rallies and gatherings. I found myself in a role of becoming one of our UMYF presidents over the years. And really, it was during that time that I began to see my own worth, my own value as a person of faith, as a person and a member of creation. I always say how being a United Methodist, we've been taught to do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God are the basic principles that I live by, and the United Methodist Church has taught me that. And that is also why it's important to me to remain United Methodist. So being a Methodist runs in my family. My dad is a retired pastor in one of the autonomous church in Latin America. I am a United Methodist because I truly believe in the concept of open table. I love the concept of being a family that welcomes everyone, no matter who you are, where you are from, and where you are going. We'll welcome you and we'll embrace you and that is not an option, that is not nice to have, that is a response to our doctrine, to our beliefs, and to our history as United Methodist people. I want other young people to give the church a chance because for me it was like finding a home and I could try things out and get to know myself better and get to know my talents more, so church was a home for me. La famille spirituelle a spiritual family can often be closer than a biological family because we are the emissaries of Christ. Christ sends us into the world to bring peace to those who are troubled, to bring joy to those who are depressed, and to bring happiness to those who may lack it. It's important to take part in this family to contribute to the transforming of the world as we are called. I feel like I became a leader in the church because it was just instilled in me. That's, that's, that's how I grew up. Growing up in Sunday school, my mom was always the one that was like, I wouldn't even have my hand raised. My mom was like, Harvey? And I'm like, I've given her the answer. And it was just like, just having that leadership quality was kind of just put in me, in my parents. It's been a blessing to be part of something as big as General Conference, and something even as small as being part of the praise team at church. I have great hope for the church. It's just boundless in terms, is limitless in terms of what can happen and what has happened and I'm just proud to be a United Methodist. Does it seem ironic that one of the most tragic days in Christian history is called Good Friday? The New Testament describes a day of suffering that ends in Jesus' crucifixion, events that sound like anything but good. Since the third century, the English and the Dutch have used the term Good Friday, which etymologists say is likely an alteration of the Germanic word gut, which means God's or holy. The rest of the world calls the day Holy Friday. History of words aside, theologians teach us that in Jesus' terrible death, God's good purpose of loving and redeeming the world is proclaimed. On Good Friday, we remember Jesus' death on the cross and look forward to his resurrection on Easter Sunday. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the greatest evidence of your unfailing love to all of us. Because of the greatest sacrifice ever told, the self-giving and self-denying death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, 
you have opened the doors of forgiveness and salvation to all your children. Today, we remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ that having been forsaken, He continues to be forgiving in fulfilling His promise to penitent sinners. He was a family-caring Savior. Although in His thirst, He appeared to be a fallen, suffering servant. But in the end, He was faithful in His mission that He finished in complete trust and obedience to you, dear Father. As we listen to your messages to us through our preachers today, May the power and wisdom of your Holy Spirit anoint all of us so that in our hearts and minds we honor and glorify you above all. In the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen.
Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldier scambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The first word, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. A blessed day to all who are worshiping with us today. It has been two years since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, and it seems like the world stopped for a moment. There were adjustments and new implemented guidelines for all of us to follow. Then, it became the new normal. However, despite all of this, there is an assurance that the words and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ never stop and did not change even for a moment. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O Lord, and may your glory be seen and not my weakness. Amen. Naranasan mo na ba na ipatawag ang parents mo sa school o ng principal o pwede ding guidance counselor dahil meron kang hindi nagawang maganda? Isa sa mahirap ipaliwanag sa magulang ay kung bakit pinapatawag sila sa school, lalong-lalo na kung alam mong meron kang kasalanan. At karamihan sa mga magulang, kapag nalaman nila na kaya sila pinatawag sa school, ay dahil may nagawang hindi maganda ang kanilang anak. Diba? Ang mga magulang ang humihingi ng tawad o nagsusorry sa nagawa ng kanilang anak. At bilang anak naman, isa ito sa pinakamagandang sa pakiramdam na ang magulang mo ang hihingi ng tawad para sa iyo. And you know what? One thing I learned in life is that one of the most selfless thing that parents will do is they will ask for forgiveness for the wrongdoings of their child. The first word of our Lord Jesus Christ when he was crucified on the cross was, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It is found in the book of Luke chapter 23 verse 34, but please allow me to read the verses from 32 to 35. And it says in contemporary English version, Two criminals were led out to be put to death with Jesus. When the soldiers came to the place called the skull, they nailed Jesus to the cross. They also nailed the two criminals to crosses, one on each side of Jesus. Jesus said, Father, forgive these people. They don't know what they are doing. While the crowd stood there watching Jesus, the soldiers gambled for his clothes. The leaders insulted him by saying, He saved others. Now he should save himself if he really is God's chosen Messiah. If we try to imagine the scene, when our Lord Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross, it is brutal and heartless. But do you remember who put our Lord Jesus Christ into this? I-rewind po natin ng kaunti ang mga pangyayari. Pontius Pilate called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people. In other translations, Pontius Pilate called the Pharisees and scribes and the crowd. 
What did Pontius Pilate told them? He told them, You brought Jesus to me and said he was a troublemaker. But I have questioned him here in front of you. And I have not found him guilty of anything that you say he has done. Herod didn't find him guilty either and sent him back. This man doesn't deserve to be put to death. It means that Pontius Pilate and even King Herod did not find Jesus Christ guilty to the accusations of the crowd. But the whole crowd shouted, Kill Jesus! Give us Barabbas! Who is Barabbas? Barabbas was in jail because he had started a riot in that city and had murdered someone. So, in exchange of Jesus, the crowd asked for Barabbas, who is a murderer. Pontius Pilate wanted to set Jesus free, so he spoke again to the crowds. But they kept shouting, Nail him to a cross! Nail him to a cross! Pilate spoke to them a third time. But what crime has he done? Pilate tinatanong ni Pontius Pilate kung ano yung nagawang kasalanan ni Jesus Christ. Sabi pa niya, I have not found him guilty of anything for which he should be put to death. This is the third time na sinabi niya ito sa crowd para i-convince sila na walang kasalanan si Jesus Christ. But the people kept on shouting as loud as they could for Jesus to be put to death. So, it happened. Our Lord Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross. His hands and his feet were nailed on the cross. Our Lord Jesus Christ was accused of things that are not proven. And two leaders, Pontius Pilate and King Herod, even testified that he is not guilty. But still, he received the punishment. If these things happen today, we might ask, where is justice? Nasaan ang hostisya? But you know what? After all these things happened, the first words that came from our Lord Jesus Christ is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. What if it happens to you? Will you do the same? Will you say the words that Jesus said? When our Lord Jesus Christ is on the cross, we all know that physically, He is wounded. He is hurt. However, He chose to say, a prayer and a request to the Father in heaven. It is remarkable that Jesus is not asking for himself. Siguro kung ako yon, my prayer would be, God, help me! Or, God, bakit sa akin nangyari to? Kung kaya ko pang sabihin yon pagkatapos ng lahat ng nangyari. Despite what they did to our Lord Jesus Christ, still, He is concerned for the people who are responsible for crucifying Him and is asking our God to forgive them. Napaka selfless, di ba? This is one of complete unselfishness and selfless. Instead of thinking of himself and his own needs, he is thinking of those whose souls are in much greater peril than his own. This is 
the greatest form of love. Our Lord Jesus Christ chose to show His love even when He is wounded and hurt and until His final hour. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. In this prayer, at His last hour, our Lord Jesus Christ addresses the God of the universe with the simple term, Father. By beginning His prayer with the word, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ expresses at the same time a love and a confidence, even a trust. He can choose any other names to call God, but He calls Him simply Father because He knows Him, He trusts Him, and He is confident in what will happen next. Let us consider the prayer again. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Our Lord Jesus Christ prays that the Father would forgive them. Sino yung tinutukoy na them? They may be the soldiers, even Pontius Pilate, the chief priests and scribes, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the crowd, and all those people who makes our Lord Jesus Christ hurt. That includes you and I. Our Lord Jesus Christ nailed and died on the cross to save us from our sins. Narinig na natin ito nung paulit-ulit. However, does it make sense to you? You and I made the cross necessary. We are the ones He prays to forgive. Now, is this important to you? Yes, of course. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Are people forgiven only? if they don't know what they are doing? Do they really don't know what they are doing? How about you? Do you really not know what you are doing? What I learned from this first word is that God is merciful. Far more merciful than any of us deserves. Nung humingi ng kapatawaran ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo sa Kanyang Ama, kasama ka, kasama ako, kasama tayo. Yes, each of us has plenty enough sins to condemn us. But God is looking deeper. He has made a way that we do not deserve because He knows that if we really knew the truth, we would embrace His Son. This pandemic is hard. Nakakapagod na. However, as we celebrate this Lenten season, let us reflect on ourselves about the first word of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When our Lord Jesus Christ begins the last phase of His life, dying on a cross, hung between heaven and earth, He prays for all of us, who put him there. He calls out to his father without any shame at the intimacy of his love, Father, forgive them. And so we pray 
the prayer ourselves. Father, forgive us. I say all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless us all.
pag-ibig mo ang kay ganda. Pag-ibig mo ang kay ganda. Pag-ibig mo ang kay ganda. Luke chapter 23 verse 40 to 43 But the other criminal protested Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die We deserve to die for our crimes but this man hasn't done anything wrong Then he said Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom And Jesus replied I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. The second word, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. In Luke chapter 23, verse 43, it says, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. But before anything else, I want to read to you the verses before it. From verse 39, one of the criminals who hang there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. One of the two thieves mocked Jesus and even challenged him to save himself. But the other one rebuked him and said, Don't you fear God? Since you are under the same sentence, we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. This other thief has come to the conclusion that Jesus is somebody who has done nothing wrong and upon realizing this, he asked to be with him. You see, it was a gloomy afternoon. Napakainit. Pag afternoon po, alam naman natin, lalo na pag summer ng ganito. It was scorching hot. Kahit dito po sa atin sa Pilipinas, napakainit ang hapon. And that time, they were about to die on the cross. They were crucified. Napakasakit. Yun lang matusok ka ng karayom sa iyong mga daliri. Ouch! Pero yung ipako ka sa cross, mas masakit. Isang kaparusahan na napakasakit. Was the request done by the thief out of de desperation? Was it done out of pain? Was it a means to find escape? Friends, let us then focus on the following. Jesus, the forgiving God. Jesus, the generous God. And Jesus, the compassionate and loving God. Jesus, the forgiving God. What was the first word about? He said, Father, forgive them. While most of his disciples fled the scene, it was narrated in the book of Luke that Jesus remained and gave his life. The crowd gathered there, shouted insults and hurting words. These were the same people who welcomed him as king when Jesus entered Jerusalem, and yet, the Lord Jesus forgave them. If we will be in the painful and difficult and troubled situation as Him, 
and the people who we think will be with us will turn their backs on us. Shall we also be forgiving? The Lord Jesus Christ did not even think twice. He never stopped forgiving. Even the people murdering him and humiliating him and placed him in that humiliating experience. I think forgiving is usually a difficult task because we believe in him and Jesus being our example, we should, no matter how hard it is, learn how to forgive. Jesus, the generous God, when the thief asked that he remember him, he who was a certified thief, a sinner, ang lakas ang loob, ano po? Isang makasalanan, aba, gusto pang sumama kung saan paparoon ang ating Panginoong Jesus. The king readily promised him. The king agad-agad sumagot si Jesus sa kanya that he will be with him that day in paradise. Sa ibang versions po sa Bible, ang pagkasabi ni pa ng Panginoong Jesus ay ganito, Truly, I assure you, ito po ay isang assurance of a generous God. Kung meron mang hindi kayang gawin ang Diyos, pero sabi nila, ang Diyos ay Diyos, lahat kaya niyang gawin. Pero meron pong isa na hindi kayang gawin ng Panginoon. Alam niyo po ba kung ano ito? Hindi po kaya ang gawin ng Panginoon ang magsinungaling. Siya bilang Diyos, hindi siya magsisinungaling kailanman. Our God is a generous God who gave His assurance to a sinner na hindi naman natin alam talaga kung siya ba'y tumanggap nung oras na yon sa ating Panginoon. Kung ano ba ang pinamuhay niya, ang alam lang natin, siya isang makasalanan. But on the cross, pareho sila, tatlo silang nakapako sa kanilang mga krus. God gave His promise. An eternal promise. He promised an eternal fellowship that He will be with Him in paradise. Hindi po sinungaling ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Pag sinabi niya, siguradong totoo yon. May kanta po pa, di ba? What a joy! What a life! What a chance! To receive and be received in God's presence. Jesus, the generous God, gave until the end. Jesus, the loving God. In 1 John chapter 4, Verse 8 says, But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Exactly! Ang hindi umiibig ay hindi nakakakilala sa Diyos, sapagkat ang Diyos ay pag-ibig. Tandang-tanda ko po ito at memoryadong memoryado ko. Nung maliliit po kami, kami po'y lumaki sa Sunday School, ano po? Pagka sinabi ng Sunday School teacher ko, Oh, sige, ano ang memory verse na gustong-gusto mo? Tasak na kami. God is love. Dahil sa amin din pong mga tahanan, sa aming tahanan, yun din po ang pinamala sa akin ng aming mga magulang. Mapagmahal ang ating Diyos. Siya ay pag-ibig. Dahil sa pagmamahal ni Jesus sa atin, kaya merong Good Friday. Ang biruan po nga namin lagi, di ba? Ka... Uh, Kasisilang lang ng Panginoon. And here comes Lent season. Eh, papatayin na naman siya. Pero this is the essence of God's love sa atin. Ipinanganak siya upang ipakita at iparamdam sa atin ang kanyang pagmamahal. 
at ngayon ibibigay niya ang buhay na yon para ma-emphasize ang pagmamahal niya sa atin. Sobra-sobrang pagmamahal. Kaya nakayanan niya ang lahat doon sa krus upang ikaw at ako ay maligtas. Imagine the pain, the humiliation. It did not stop Jesus to reveal or how or show His goodness and His love. When he was here in earth, sabi nga natin, mababasa natin sa mga kwento na ating natutunan pagbukas natin sa ating mga Bibles na ikinukwento sa atin ng tayo maliliit pa. Hanggang ngayon, dinidiscuss pa rin natin. When he was here, he healed the sick, casted away demons, he mingled with sinners, kumain pa siya, nakasabay nila. He related with the weak and the outcast. He was compassionate and most of all, he loved the unlovable. Mga may sakit, ilalapit sa kanya. Pinapagalitan siya bakit daw siya nagpapagamot, naggagamot sa araw ng Sabat. He performed miracles after miracles. Through all this, he showed his love, even as he was about to die. He loved the criminal on the cross. He made him feel it. He gave his promise to him. At sa atin din, this gives us the assurance that there is a loving God who wants to be with us. A God who is more than willing to go down to our level so we may fellowship with Him. Nakakatuwa po, no? Sa panahong ito na ating dinaranas. Tayo ay very blessed. Bakit? Tayo na patuloy na lumalapit sa Panginoon. Patuloy na Nagsisilbi sa kanyang pangalan. Blessed po tayo dahil binigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na makapagsilbi to serve others in Jesus' name. My brothers and sisters, let us not wait for that last moment to ask Jesus to be with Him. Kailangan pa po ba na makaranas tayo ng mga pagsubok sa ating buhay bago natin ma-realize na merong Panginoon, na merong isang Jesus na nagmamahal sa atin sa lahat ng panahon. Tama po yung narinig ko kung minsan naaalala lang natin ng Panginoon pag tayo may sakit. Lahat ng mga kakilala natin, sister, Brother, pakipanalangin mo naman si ano kasi ang aking anak o ang aking ano o ako mismo kasi meron akong nararamdaman. Kailangan po ba natin ma-experience muna yung ganun or dumating ang panahon na nandun ka na sa yung deathbed bago mo ma-realize na may Panginoon na nagmamahal sa'yo. Bago mo gawin ang gusto mong mapalapit sa Panginoon. Huwag na na Wag na po natin hintayin yon mga kapatid. Let us not wait for that last moment to ask Jesus to be with Him. We all can ask Him today. Ngayon na po. Not tomorrow, not on the following day, not next week or next month, today. Habang may pagkakataon pa po tayo, habang may taglay pa tayong kalakasan, Gamitin natin ito. Ang ating kalakasan na tinataglay, gamitin na natin para tayo makapag-serve sa ating Panginoon. All we have to do is ask and trust Him. And I am sure, we will also receive the same promise. I assure you, truly, totoong-totoo, today, you will be with me in paradise. Amen. I have this
John chapter 19, verse 26 to 27. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. The third word, Dear woman, here is your son, and here is your mother. Isang mapagpalang araw sa lahat po ng kamanggagawa at kapatiran dito sa Baguio Episcopal Area. Our scripture text is found in the Gospel according to John Chapter 19, verses 26 to 27, and it says, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. As Jesus hung on the cross, the Bible records that he spoke seven final statements. The first word is a prayer for forgiveness for man's sins. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. 
The second one is a promise to a repentant sinner. Today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. The third statement, which was assigned to me, is recorded in John chapter 19, verses 26 to 27. It expresses the Lord's care and concern for his mother. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The unnamed disciple whom Jesus addressed was the Apostle John himself. Jesus addresses his mother not as mother but as woman, translated appropriately as dear woman by the New International Version. Sa ating kultura, hindi po magandang pakinggan na tawaging babae ang iyong ina. Subalit sa kultura ni Jesus, ng mga Hudyo, ito ay tama lamang. Marahil ay may nais ipahiwatig si Jesus patungkol sa batas sa pamilya ayon sa mga Hudyo. According to a manual Greek lexicon of the New Testament by G. Abbott Smith, Using the word woman to refer to a female was a term of respect and endearment. In John chapter 2 verse 4, Jesus also uses the term woman, which is a respectful form of address. Christ calls her not mother, but woman, not out of disrespect to her or ashamed of her, but partly that he might not raise or add strength to her passions by a tenderness of speaking and partly to conceal her from the mob and lest she should be exposed to their rude insults. Luke chapter 2 verse 7 tells us that Jesus was Mary's firstborn son. Since Jesus was the eldest son, it was his responsibility to ensure the care of his mother. This was a Jewish custom and a part of honoring one's parents in accordance with the commandment. Ganyan din po sa ating Filipino culture. Responsibilidad ng mga anak na pangalagaan ang kanilang mga magulang sa kanilang panahon ng pangangailangan, lalo na sa kanilang pagtanda. Alam natin na noong tayo ay mga bata pa, sila ang nag-aruga, nag-alaga sa atin hanggang sa kaya na nating tumayo sa ating mga sariling paa. Marami po silang mga hirap, pagsubok at sakripisyo para lamang maitaguyod tayo at mabigyan ng magandang kinabukasan. Ngayon sa kanilang pagtanda, Sa panahon ng pangangailangan nila ng kalinga at gabay, responsibilidad ng mga anak, panganay ka man, gitna o bunso, dapat lamang na pagsilbihan mo sila sa panahon ng kanilang kahinaang pisikal o kahit espiritual. Tinatawag ito na chains of roles, isang cycle na hindi dapat maputong habang tayo ay nabubuhay. Jesus knew as he hung on the cross that his death was near. He was in severe pain and knew he was about to make the ultimate sacrifice according to his heavenly Father's plan. In spite of the agony, Jesus was concerned about his mother and her care after he was gone. Christ made provision for his mother by charging one of his disciples, whom he deeply loved, to take care of her as if she was his own mother. As it is written in John chapter 19 verse 27, Jesus' oral statement 
before witnesses made the application to the beloved disciple binding. Sa panahon ng pandemya, ngayon po na may coronavirus pandemic, dito natin nakita at nasubok ang ating pag-ibig sa ating kapwa, sa ating pamilya, umaging sa ating mga kamag-anak, kapitbahay, o sa ating church community. Nakapagbahagi tayo ng tulong at ayuda sa mga naapektuhan ng coronavirus at maging tayo ay nakatanggap rin sa kahit anong uri ng tulong para lang maibsan ang hirap na pinagdadaanan ng bawat isa. Ayon sa Biblia, malalaman nila na tayo ay mga disipulo ni Kristo sa uri ng pag-ibig na ating ibinibigay sa ating kapwa, particularly sa ating mga pamilya. The meaning and significance of Jesus' words in John chapter 19 verses 26 to 27 toward the woman who was his mother shows us that we are to love our parents and to provide for them as much as we are physically able. By so doing, we also show our love for Jesus and for God, our Father. Tayo manalangin. Dakilang Diyos, aming Ama, maraming salamat dahil ang bawat isa sa amin na nakikinig ngayon ay kabahagi ng isang pamilya. Loobin mo, O Diyos, na ma-realize namin ang aming mga tungkulin bilang mga magulang, anak, kapatid, at bilang iyong alagad. Na magampanan namin ang responsibilidad na magmahal, magsilbi sa anumang paraan, upang mapanatili sa tamang ayos ang anumang human relationship meron kami habang kami ay nabubuhay. Gaya ni Jesus, Maging matapat nawa kami sa aming mga tungkulin bilang isang anak, magulang o kapatid sa isang pamilya. Ito ang aking hiling sa pangalan ng ating Panginoon at sariling tagapagdiktas na si Yesus. Amen.
Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The fourth word, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The fourth word of Jesus Christ in the cross is written in Mark chapter 15 verse 34 and it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The text for today is from the heart of King David in Psalm chapter 22, verse 1, and from the heart of Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 15, verse 34. Both King David and Jesus spoke these words from their heart. Oftentimes in our lives, we have this feeling of abandonment, of being forsaken by our loved ones, our family, and our friends. When we harbor this feeling, it lead us to feel disappointed, depressed, and may even lead us to feel angry. If this is what we feel, it is but normal. We are humans, by the way. In our life experiences, there are also times that we feel we are forsaken by God. We feel that God seems so distant. We call on Him and yet God is so silent. We can't wait for His answer. We all feel abandoned by God. This happens in life, especially when tragedies came to you personally. From the Old Testament, King David wrote the famous words in Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? His words continue. 
Why are you so far from saving me, Lord? Why are you so far from my groaning? Why do I cry out to you, and yet you do not answer? King David had these feelings in his heart that God had forsaken him, abandoned him, and deserted him. But why? Because of the personal tragedies of his life. King David felt this way because King Saul was trying to kill him. His enemies were trying to kill him. His oldest son was trying to kill him. His family didn't turn out very well. David was feeling down in the dumps and the road. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The same is true to Job. Job experienced many personal tragedies. He lost all he had, his wealth, his health, his wife, his children. Job lost everything. And he felt that God had abandoned him, deserted him, and Job was angry with God and even rage at God. Those feelings were all normal. King David and Job felt that God has deserted them. When people experience that they are abandoned by their loved ones and that they are abandoned by God, it is with these feelings that we approach the text today. What life lessons can we glean from these words of Jesus Christ in the cross? First, it is normal to feel forsaken. It is a normal feeling at all. And it is also normal to express our feelings of abandonment to God. Normal nga karirik na ti panakabaybayan ket normal met day jay panangirwar day ta rik na kas impakita ni Apo Jesus ijay Cruz. Just like David and Job crying out to God their feelings after the chain of tragedies in their lives. They both believe in God love God, and try to be faithful to Him. And yet, both of them felt that they are deserted by God. As we walk diligently in God's ways, we will undoubtedly face difficulties and tribulations. We will also feel alone or abandoned at times during our faith journey. But keep in mind that despite appearances, this is not the case. God never abandoned Jesus. He will not abandon us as well. We must continually adhere to His words, which promise that He will never desert us. But the second lesson that we should not miss in this text is that these are not his last words. These are not his last words, not his final words, and not the end of the story. King David wrote the 22nd of Psalm my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he also wrote the next psalm that Job complained to God when he lost all his possessions, his family, and his everything. He rallied against God in his anger, but those were not his last words. 
He also wrote at the end of his book, I know that my Redeemer lives. Job's feelings of abandonment were not his last words. It was around 3 p.m. on that Friday. Jesus was hung in there for about three hours. The world darkened. The shout of Jesus reverberated in the sky. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? However, these words are not his last. And we think and we thank God it is not his last. Amen.
John chapter 19 verse 28 Jesus knew that his mission was now finished and to fulfill scripture he said I am thirsty The fifth word I am thirsty Pagpalang araw po sa ating lahat, bago po tayo magsimula, manalangin po muna tayo. Panginoong makapangiringan sa lahat, pinupuri at pinapasalamatan ka namin, Ama, sa pagkakataon na ito na binigay niya sa amin. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa pag-inilay sa ikapitong salita ng aming, Panginoon, ng aming Panginoon. Dalangin ko, Panginoon, na kayo po ang magbigay ng sapat na katalinuhan sa mensahero na gagamitin mo. Nawa ang mensahe na ito ay magamit po nila sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na buhay. Pinabalik po namin sa inyo lahat ng papulit pa sa salamat sa inyong pinakadakilang pangalan. Amen. Muli po babasahin ko po yung teksto na matatagpuan po sa Aklat ni Juan, Kabanata 19, Talata 28. At ganito ang sinasabi. Pagkatapos nito, pagkaalam ni Jesus na ang lahat ng mga bagay ay naganap na nga upang matupad ang kasulatan ay sinabi na uuhaw ako. Ang ikalimang salita o winika ng ating Panginoon ay ang katagang na uuhaw ako. Ngayon sa puntong ito, nais ko rin tanungin ang bawat isa sa atin. Na uuhaw rin ba kayo? Ang katanungan na tanging kayo lang rin ang mahasasagot. Pagkatapos ng aking sermon, marahil ang ilan ay makapagbibigay ng kanya-kanyang kasagutan sa katanungan na ilahan. Bakit nga ba tayo nauuhaw? Saan tayo nauuhaw? Ano-ano ang mga bagay na nakapagpapakuhaw sa atin? Uhaw ba tayo sa pag-ibig? Uhaw ba tayo sa pagkalina? Uhaw ba tayo sa pisikal na aspeto? Ikaw ba'y uhaw sa espiritual? Ilan sa mga katanungan na sumasagi sa aking isipan, marahil sa inyo rin, na nais natin na magbigyan ng kasagutan Subalit kung ano, ma- ano pa man iyan, marahil masasagot mula sa tatlong puntos na ibabahagi ko sa araw na ito. Una, ang, kalita- ang kalikasan ng pagiging tao ng ating Panginoon. Sa Aklat ni Juan, Kabanata 4, Talata 7, inilalahad na dumating ang isang babaeng taga Samaria upang umigib ng tubig. Sa kanya ay sinabi ni Jesus, painumin mo ako. Sa pagkakataon nito, makikita natin ang tunay na kalikasan ng pagkatao ng ating Panginoon. Dala ng pagod sa paglalakad at sakit na naranasan mula sa mga hampas ng latigo at sa katilikan ng araw na kadama ng pagkauhaw ang ating Panginoon. Kapansin-pansin, ang pagkasabit ng madampian ang kanyang labing uhaw na uhaw. Sa eksena ito, masasabi natin na katulad rin natin nilalang may pagkakataon sa buhay natin na, narara- na nakakaranas tayo ng pagkauhaw. Halimbawa na nga lang, naglakad tayo ng pagkalayo-layo hanggang marating natin ang ating destinasyon. Pagkarating natin roon, Ang una natin mararamdaman ay siyempre yung pagkauhaw. Kaya naman, kaagad tayong kukuha ng tubig upang maibsan ang ating pagkauhaw. Sa puntong ito ng ating buhay, 
ay nakararanas sa ba ng pagkauhaw? Maraming mga bagay na nagdudulot o nagiging dahilan upang tayo makuhaw, subalit sa kabila ng lahat ng ito, ay may isang bagay lamang na ating mapaghahawakan. At iyon ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Inuulit ko po, ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Isa na ito sa pinakamabisang paraan sa pagpawi o pag-alis ng kauhawan na ating nararanasan. Nagdag pa rito ang manifestasyon na taintin na pagtitiwala at paghihintay ng Panginoon sa, sa krus ay nakapagdudulot upang maipakita ang tunay niyang pagkatao na kung maihahali tulad sa atin ay may pagkakataon rin na kaparehas sa sitwasyon ng ating Panginoon. Para naman po sa ikalawa, ang sakripisyo ng ating Panginoon. Ang pagkauhaw ng ating Panginoon ay isa rin palatandaan ng pagsasakripisyo niya para lamang matubos ang sanibutan sa kasalanan. Sinabi ni Jesus, Nauuhaw ako dahil siya ang nagdurusa kapalit ng makasalanan. Mula sa aklat ng mga taga-Roma, Kabanata 5, Talata 12, sinasabi, sa pamamagitan ng isang tao ay pumasok ang kasalanan sa sanglibutan at ang kamatayay sa pamamagitan ng kasalanan at sa ganito'y ang kamatayan ay naranasan ng lahat ng tao sapagkat ang lahat ay nagkasala. Sa krus, si Jesus ay pinahirapan sa pamamagitan ng pagtusok ng sibat sa kanyang puso. Nang sa gayoy, ang ating mga puso ay mapatawan. Isinabit sa kanyang ulo ang korona na may tinig upang ang mga kasalanan ng ating mga isipan ay mapatawan. Ang pagkapako ng kanyang mga kamay sa krus ay palatandaan upang ang kasalanan ating magagawa gamit ang ating mga kamay ay mapatawan. Ang pagkapako ng kanyang mga paa ay nagpapahiwati upang ang kasalanan na ating magagawa sa paglalakad ay mapatawan. Siya rin ay nagpauhaw hanggang ang kanyang dila at lumabas na sa kanyang nalangala. Teribling pagkauhaw upang gamutin ang mga kasalanan ng ating mga bibig. Siya ay nasugatan dahil sa ating pagsalangsang. Siya ay nabubog dahil sa ating kasamaan. Ang parusa ng tungkol sa ating kapayapaan ay nasa Kanya. At sa pamamagitan ng Kanyang mga latay ay nagsigayin tayo. Ang mga palatandaan ito ay pagpapakita ng sakripiso ng ating Panginoon. Sa lamang itong palatandaan ng Kanyang pagmamahal na walang kapantay. Kaya naman, malaking paalala at hamon ito sa bawat isa sa atin sapagkat ang sakripisyong ipinalmanas ni Jesus ay kailanman hindi kayang pantayan ng sinuman. At ang panghuling puntos, ang kaligtasan ng sanlibutan. O hindi nagdusa ng pagkauhaw si Jesus sa krus, ang bawat isa sa atin ay kakailangan ni magdusa ng pagkauhaw sa impyerno. Ang pagpapakasakit ng Panginoon sa krus, partikular ang kanyang pagkauhaw, ay palatandaan ng pagbiligtas niya sa sanibutan para sa kaparusahan na kanilang mahakamtan. Ang kaligtasan ng sanibutan ay maliwanag na ipinapakita sa kanyang pagdurusa. Sa lamang itong patunay na napakalawak at hindi malinigatahan ang pag-ibig ng ating Panginoon. Nauuhaw ako ang ikalimang winika ng ating Panginoon noong siya ay nasa krus. Ngayon, sa puntong ito, isang hamon ang nais iparating sa pangyayari ito. 
ang pagkauhaw ay may pisikal at espiritual na kadahilanan, subalit ang lahat ng ito'y mapapawi sa tulong ng ating Panginoon. Ikaw ba'y nauuhaw? Naway naging sapat ang mensahe sa atin ng ating Panginoong Diyos na pawiin ang kauhawan na ating naranasan, nara, nararanasan at mararanasan. Naway nakapagnilay ang bawat isa sa atin. Ito ang mensahe ng Diyos para sa kanyang mga anak. Mapagpala at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Sa Diyos lahat ang papuri.
Could you be me as I are to be? Could you be me as I are? Please be me as I are to me. John chapter 19 verse 30 When Jesus had tasted it he said it is finished that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit The sixth word it is finished Isang mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. God is good! And all the time, God is good. Amen po. Truly that God is good and His love endures forever. When Sir Kier asked me to be part of the Bayo Holy Week service, napatanong ako, kaya ko po. But at the end, nag-confirm din ako at binigay po niya ang text sa akin. It is finished. Binasa ko yung text. Ngunit kaubalian ko po, nakapagbinipigyan pa ako ng text. Binabasa ko po yung text before ng text na binigay sa akin upang makita ko po yung background. Ngunit ang na-retain po sa utak ko ay, I am thirst. I ask God, what is His message? Pero matagal na wala. One time, God willed to me something and I started to write it down until I finished the sermon. I said to myself, finally, I can say it is finished. I was about to send the message, but as I reviewed the message, I realized I used the wrong verse. Iba pala yung nagawa ko. I am done, but I cannot say it is finished. What does it have to do with our lives? Ano ang kaugnayan nito sa buhay natin? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Please reveal to me your servant, your message, and speak through me. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as I share your message and as your people hear your words. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our text in John chapter 19 verse 30 says, When he had received the drink, he said, It is finished. With that, he bowed down his head and gave up his spirit. Finish. Come to an end. In Greek word, tetelestai. And he said this in the midst of his sufferings. The mission of Jesus Christ in coming to earth is to save us. The mission was clear to him. He will be born as a man. For us to feel his presence. He will teach the people to believe and learn. He will suffer for us to feel His love. And He will die to pay for our sins. Alam niya malalagutan na siya ng hininga at matatapos na niya ang mission niya. Kaya sabi niya, it is finished. Shout of victory! I would like to emphasize two things that Jesus was pointing out when he said, it is finished. The first one, being in a form of man. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in a very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. It is clear that Jesus left his true nature of being God and embraced the nature of being man. Bagamat siya ay Diyos, iniwan niya ang pagiging Diyos niya pansamantala. At sumunod siya sa mission niya na maging tao at makahalibilo sa mga tao as a servant. I remember the second verse of the song for unto us. It says, Who being in a form of man, 
made himself of a new reputation, and he took on him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man, being found as a man. And he became obedient unto death. It was the name above all names. This is true because in John chapter 1 verse 1 and 14 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in 14, and the world made flesh and dwelt among us. And he behold his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This proves the deity of Jesus. Knowing these things will lift up our confidence as Christians. We are in the right path of believing Jesus as God the Son. I remember the question of a man, if Jesus is God, it means when Jesus died for three days, you don't have God for three days. The answer is no, we have God. Because Jesus' physical body was the only death, and after that, he rose again. And that is part of his mission. So there is no reason for us not to believe Jesus. There is no reason for us not to accept him. There is no reason for us not to believe in the deity of Jesus. Because Jesus is 100% God and he only became 100% man when he became when he came to the world to save us. When Jesus said it is finished, tapos na ang mission niya sa pagiging tao niya. He is now 100% God. The second and the last one, his mission to save us. Save us from what? In Romans 3.10, as it is written, no one is righteous, not even one. In Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short the glory, fall short the glory of God. It means lahat po ng tao ay may kasalanan and no one can enter the kingdom of God. In Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. That means eternal punishment. Eternal punishment sa hell. But God doesn't want us to be punished. So we send Jesus Christ and his mission is to be crucified for our sins to be paid. In John 3, 16, let us all recite. For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. Instead of eternal punishment to hell, Jesus took all our sins. We didn't do anything, even the sins that you are still about to commit. It was being paid. Did we do something about it? None, nothing. It was all done by Jesus and there is no other thing that we can do now but to accept Him as our Lord and Savior and every time we commit sin, ask for forgiveness. Romans 10 verse 9 That if thou shalt confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised Him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. When Jesus died on the cross, his mission to save us was over. Romans 6:23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Christ's mission was that, and ours are still in our journey. We only have two missions. Number one, to accept Jesus Christ in our lives and make Him as our Lord and Savior for us to have eternal life and not eternal punishment. Let us remember John 3.16. The second one, make disciples. Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey, observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Pagdalawa natin ang dalawang yan, bago tayo mamatay, we can say it is finished. Gusto kong balikan natin yung kwento ko. Nagawa ko yung unang sermon. Pwede kong sabihin, I am done. Pero hindi ko pwedeng sabihin, it is finished. Kasi hindi yun yung pinapagawa sa akin. Sa buhay natin, kahit anong pagpapagal ang ginagawa mo sa buhay mo, mga kapatid. Kahit kayo dito, kayo doon. Pagahanap ng pera, pagkamit ng mga pangarap, ng karangalan, pagbibigay ng tulong sa marami. Yun yung mga nais at happy sigad sa lahat ng tagumpay mo sa buhay. Pero hanggat hindi mo ginawa na si Jesus ang totoong magahari sa buhay mo at hanggang wala ka pang kanunwa na nailapit sa Diyos na handa rin magbahagi sa iba, you cannot say it is finished. The challenge for us now is to go back to the true and real mission in life. To make Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior of our lives and to share the saving grace of Jesus Christ to all people we encounter. Let us give time to our true mission so that at the end of our lives, we can also say, it is finished. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. The seventh word, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Mapagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat, ang ikapitong wika ni Jesus sa Cruz. Lucas chapter 23 verse 46 Sumigaw ng malakas si Jesus, Ama, sa mga kamay mo'y ipinagtatagubilin ko ang aking espiritu. Ano ang mensahe sa atin na nakapaloob sa huli at ikapitong wika ni Jesus sa Cruz ngayong panahon ng pandemic? Kumusta po ang ating relasyon sa Panginoon? Dalawang taon na po na ang pandemic ay nararanasan sa buong mundo. Kanino po natin itinatagubilin ang ating mga espiritu dahil hindi po natin alam ko ano ang mangyayari sa kinabukasan. Marami sa atin ay may iba't ibang karanasan sa pandemic na ito. July 9, 2021, nagsimula akong makaramdam ng pananakit ng katawan. Di makatulog hanggang ako ay nilagnat at nag-LBM. Nag-RT-PCR test ako at ako ay positive sa COVID-19. Dinala agad ako sa hospital dahil marami akong comorbidities. Doon, nakita na ako po ay mayroon ng pneumonia. Ang unang tatlong araw ko sa hospital ay sadyang napakahirap. Walang pagkakaiba ang aking nararamdaman noong ako ay nasa bahay at nasa hospital. Wala akong maramdamang maayos, ang hirap kuminga at walang tigil ang aking pagdumi. Doon ko naranasan na matusok ng higit sampung tusok ng karayom sa isang araw dahil pumuputok na ang aking ugat dahil sa dehydration. Wala akong ibang magawa. Hindi ko maasahan ang gamot, ang mga doktor, para maibsan ang sakit na aking nararamdaman. Pinili ko na ibigay sa kay God ang lahat-lahat. Ipinagkatiwala ko ang lahat ng sakit, hirap na aking nararamdaman. Sa dami ng mga nagmamahal at nanalangin para sa akin, alam ko na sila lahat ay nagtiwala at naniwala sa Diyos upang malampasan at mapagtagumpayan ko ang COVID-19 virus. Purihin ang Diyos sa buhay ng aking mga kaibigan, mga kakilala at mahal sa buhay na nagtiwala sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos. January 10, 2022, nagka-COVID ulit ako. Naranasan ko din lahat ng mga symptoms gaya noong una. Salamat sa Diyos sa pamabagitan ng kanyang anak na si Heso Kristo sa pangalawang pagkakataon. Muli kong isinuko ang lahat sa Kanya at muli niya akong pinagtagumpay. Ang itagubilin natin ang ating Espiritu sa Diyos at ipagkatiwala sa Kanya ang lahat, ang pinakamabuting magagawa natin sa bawat araw sa lahat ng pagkakataon, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemic. Ama, sa mga kamay mo'y itinatagubilin ko ang aking Espiritu. Mensahe, ng pagtitiwala sa kamay ng Ama. Nakasanayan ko na sa pagising sa umaga ang bumulong sa Diyos. Salamat po, Jesus. Nagpiprepare para sa devotion at magjo-journal at paglabas sa aming bahay ay sasabihin ko kay God na, Lord Jesus, pangunahan niyo po ako sa aking mga hakbang. Kayo na po ang bahala sa akin. At ako ay kampanti na sa buong maghapon. Isang kasanayan na ito ay natutunan ko sa Harris nung ako ay estudyante pa lamang. Isang araw ng Sabado, ako at ang aking big sis partner ay pupunta sa aming weekend appointment sa Pasa UMC sa my Libertad Station. Kami ay nagpray, tanda ko pa sa harap ng Sunshine Dorm. Lord, pangunahan niyo po kami at ipinagkakatiwala po namin sa inyo 
ang aming pagpunta sa aming destino. Sumakay kami ng jeep. Ang pera ko po ay 10 pesos. 125 ang pamasahe hanggang sa church natin sa Pasay, sa May Libertad. Ako po ang nagbayad ng aming pamasahe. Pagdating sa church sa Libertad, pinapunta kami sa Malibay. Ito po ay extension class ng ating church doon. Na ang pamasahe ay 125. Ako po ulit ang namasahe para sa amin ni Big Sis. Pagdating sa Malibay, ay sasakay ulit ng tri-bike o pajak para makarating kami sa bahay ng miyembro kung saan yung ating extension para kami ay magturo. Bawat isa po ay 250. Nagbayad po ulit ako. Naibayad na po ang 10 pesos na pera ko. Pagdating sa lugar, ako ang nagturo ng mga bata at si Big Sis partner naman po ay sa mga kabataan. Masaya ang aming pagtuturo. Pagkaya rin ang aming gawain, doon ay babalik na, babalik na kami sa uh, Pasa UMC para sumali kami sa choir practice. Kinausap ko si Big Sis, sabi ko, Big Sis, ikaw na po ang mamasahe sa ating pagbalik sa church. Medyo nahihiya siya at sinabi sa akin, Small Sis, wala akong pera, okay lang ba na ikaw ulit? Sa susunod na Sabado at Linggo naman ako. Bigla akong kinabaan at naghalala. Big Sis, 10 pesos lang ang pera ko. Naubos na po natin. Bulong ko sa kanya. Di po siya nag-alala. Opo, hindi ko po siya nakita nag-alala. Tinawag po kami ng miyembro na magmeryenda. Sabi po sa akin ni Big Sis, Small Sis, kain tayo ng marami para may lakas tayong maglakad hanggang sa church. Naku po, ang layo pa ng church, sabi ko. Pero, sabi ko kay Big Sis, Sige Big Sis, sanay naman akong maglakad ng malayo. Pagkayari namin kumain, bago kami umalis, ay pinagpray ni Big Sis yung miyembro na nagpamirienda sa amin. Ready na kami maglakad. Bitbit ko ang aking mga visual aids at siya naman yung kanyang gitara. Pinasalamatan namin ang miyembro. At nung nagpasalamat kami, Inabotan kami ng tigti 20 pesos kami. Abot langit ang aming pasasalamat, ang galing ni Lord. Sobra pa sa aming kailangan ang kanyang ibinigay. Dahil sa aming simpleng pagtitiwala, pagtatalaga ng aming gawain ng araw na yon. Sa, sa sitwasyon na yon, hindi po ba maliwanag na tinugon ng ating Panginoon ang, ka, ang aming kahilingan sa Kanya na kami ay pangunahan at samahan sa aming gawain. Ang pagtitiwala sa ating Panginoon ay pagiging dependent sa Kanya. Ibig sabihin ay wala tayong magagawa kung wala siya sa buhay natin, sa mga ginagawa natin. Pinupuri natin siya at pinapasalamatan sa lahat ng nangyayari sapagkat nasa Kanyang kamay ang kontrol ng lahat ng bagay at mga pangyayari. Ipinagkatiwala buong buo ni Jesus ang kanyang kaluluwa, earthly soul, sa kamay ng kanyang ama. Mensahe ng pagsuko sa kamay ng ama. Ayon sa libro ni Rick Warren na Purpose Driven Life, ang pagsuko ay hindi lamang ang pinakamabuting paraan para mabuhay, kundi ito lamang ang paraan para mabuhay. Isinuko ni Jesus ang lahat sa kamay ng kanyang ama. Naging obedient sa lahat ng bagay maging sa kanyang kamatayan upang matupad ang pinakamagandang pangyayari sa buhay ng tao, ang kaligtasan. Ating tandaan na sa tuwing tayo ay sumusuko, tayo ay nagwawagi sapagkat nawawakasan ang paghihirap may acceptance sa atin na hindi na natin kaya. At dito nagsisimula, nakikilos ang banal na espiritu sa ating buhay. Patuloy kong napapatunayan sa aking pang-araw-araw na, na pamumuhay, ang mga bagay at, sit at sitwasyon ay tiyak na mababago pag itinagobilin mo sa kamay ng ating Diyos. Ang mga sakit, sa kamay ni Jesus ay magiging awit. Ang mga paghihirap, sa kamay ni Jesus ay magiging pagsasaya. 
ang iyong problema sa kamay ni Jesus ay magiging pagpapala. Ang iyong kahihiyan sa kamay ni Jesus ay magiging katagumpayan. Ang iyong kahinaan sa kamay ni Jesus ay magiging kalakasan. Ang ating pag-aalinlangan sa kamay ni Jesus ay may kasiguraduhan. Lagi nating isipin, naisin at piliin na tayo ay laging nasa kamay ni Jesus. Walang sinuman o anuman ang makakaagaw sa atin sa makapangyarihang kamay ng ating Ama. Ama, sa mga kamay mo'y itinatagubilin ko ang aking espiritu. Amen. Pinakahihintay ay ang marinig ang iyong tinig Sumisikaw aking dip-dip sa labis na pananabik Mga anghel ay nagdirihiwag sa palasyo mo Anong ganda? Almighty God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the presence of the Holy Spirit, as we celebrate the Good Friday, we thank you. We praise your name on high. And Lord, thank you for the powerful messages nga nadungug mi, kadagitoy leader like kumi, isabsabali ng annual conferences di Baguio Episcopal Area. Dakal pong salamat, ginung Diyos. 
at magpapatuloy kami Panginoon na maisa pamuhay ang mga bawat minsaheng ito sa aming paglilingkod sa iyo pong ministeryo. At this moment, O God, we live in our prayer sa araw na ito minsan pa. Patuloy na kilang Diyos na pinapanalangin namin the Church Universal. The victory of revival of the Church Universal, O God, for the whole globe. Ingatan mo po ang bawat mga manggagawa, ang mga bawat leader ng mga bawat iglesia, Panginoon. This community of believers na marami pang mga tao ang mailapit sa iyo to praise your name on high. At makita nila na may isang Yesus na dakilang tagapagligtas ng sangkatauhan. We do pray for our church leaders, their hearts for Jesus, their heart for service unto your name alone, O God. We declare humbleness, holiness, and hopefulness to everyone, O Panginoon. Na sa iyo kami patuloy na sasandal, patuloy na makikita ang pag-asa namin sa inyo. Ingatan mo po ang aming mga church leaders na kilang Diyos. Anoint them with your own leadership, O God. The leadership na ibinigay na halimbawa ng aming Panginoong Yesu Kristo. We do pray all the Christian families that every members of every family get closer to you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. Ikaw, dakilang Diyos, iti makita ti amin nga membro ti pamilya awan sa bali ni Kristo Yesus nga isuna iti nangisalakan kada kami am amin. When, o Apo, dinadalangin din namin ang nalalapit na eleksyon sa Mayo 9, panahon pa rin ng kampanyahan, panahon pa rin ng pagkilatis ng mga manunungkulan sa aming lipunan, lalo ngigit dito sa aming bansang Pilipinas na may namahal. Panginoon, dalangin po namin ang katotohanan, dinadalangin namin dakilang Diyos na makita ng bawat mamamayang Pilipino, Panginoon, ang inyo pong dakilang kalooban ng siyang mapangyari, at hayaan mo na kami ay mabigyan ng katalinuhan sa pagkilati, sa pagpili ng tapat na manunungkulan sa aming pong bansa mula sa aming Pangulo hanggang sa mga kagawad ng bawat bayan at munisipalidad. Lord, we do pray for our environment, ang umiiyak na kalikasan, Panginoon. Dalangin namin na ang bawat isa dakilang Diyos ay magkaroon ng damdamin upang sa ganun Panginoon ang aming kalikasan ay mapanumbalik dakilang Ama sa maganda nitong kalalagayan. Tulungan mo po ang bawat mamamayan na maging disiplinado sa pangangalaga ng aming pong kalikasan. Dakilang Ama, be the Jehovah Rapa for the whole world na nasa gitna pa rin kami ng pandemya. Ang mumiapo nga sika, timang parigsat, timang tad, tinaindaklan, nga uh, pigsa, tintiro nga lubong, tapno, uh, aday toy, nga sakit, nga in tad, ti COVID, kat mapukawan. We do believe, O oh God, for your own glory alone, O oh God, a breakthrough from this pandemic and all other diseases sa mga nangangailangan ng kagilingan right now let your mighty hands your healing hands touch them in the mighty power of your name they will be healed by faith katulad ng inyong pong ipinagkakaloob noong paman na kilang Diyos salamat Panginoon sa sakripisyo mo na naalala namin sa diwa ng aming nanamang mga gawain ng Holy Week. Salamat Panginoon na patuloy na matatanghal ang iyong dakilang pangalang Yesus na siyang nagligtas sa buong sangkatauhan. Lord, thank you for everyone. Thank you for our beloved bishops sa aming pong ubispo ng Baguio Episcopal Area, Pedro M. Torrio Jr., Sir Yaco Francisco in Manila, same with Bishop Rudy Juan in the Bao area. And the whole college of bishop, O Lord, the whole UMC family, both clergy, lay, and deaconesses. Si Kaapo nga Rod, ti Kanayon nga mangtad kanyami, ti Puso ti Ayat, ti Ayat nga naggapo kanyam, kat kastamat, Panginoon, ang aming pagkakaunawaan sa lahat ng sandali ng aming paglilingkod. Maraming maraming salamat po. At ang lahat ng ito ay namin dinadalangin in the mighty name, In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. My congratulations to all our speakers for this afternoon. Kayo pong lahat 
ay magagaling at uh, matatalino. Ngayon, sama-sama nating tanggapin ang pagpapala ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Jesus, we wait here by your tomb carrying our grief. The grief of the betrayer. The grief of the denier. The grief of the crucifiers. We carry the grief of the lost, the heartbroken, the bereft. Upon you was laid the grief of us all. It is finished. God of endings, God of darkness, God of the tomb, God of dark days and great loss, be with us now as we wait with Jesus. Amen and Amen.